Hello, my name is Dan Johnson. I am a technical sound designer at Somatone Interactive. In this series of videos, we will show the pipeline for working with Google VR audio plugins in FMOD and Unity. We will be using the Viking Village demo and a Vive to demonstrate, but FMOD and GVR will work with any device. There are a few concepts I want to go over before we dive in. The first is ambisonics. Ambisonics is the technique that describes creating the full sphere of sound around a listener. And that includes the stereo panning of left and right, as well as the vertical plane of up and down. We will be using first order ambisonic files. They are four channel files that do not correspond to speakers, and for the purposes of VR, should be decoded to a stereo output and heard in headphones. The next concept is the different GVR plugins. There are three plugins in FMOND, the listener, the source, and the sound field. The listener takes information from both the source and the sound field to spatialize audio and output a stereo output. This should be put on your master bus in FMOD. The source takes mono sound files and applies distance attenuation and directivity patterns, then sends that information to the listener. The sound field decodes first order ambisonic files based on rotation and sends it to the listener. Spatial audio in GVR is comprised of three effects. Interaural time differences, the difference in time from when one ear hears a sound to when the other hears that same sound. Interaural level differences, the difference in volume between one ear and the other. And spectral filtering, the changes our outer ear makes to a sound depending on the angle in which it reflects off of the outer ear and into our inner ear. This is the primary way in which we hear elevation of sounds. Based on these effects, Google has created HRTFs, or head related transfer functions, that recreate the effects and package them into the GVR audio plugins so we can spatialize sounds in virtual reality. The plugins also include distance attenuation curves and can link into the GVR audio room, which will simulate early and rate ref reflections or reverb in real time. The plugins also have settings for directivity patterns, occlusion, and spread. The directivity is the way the sound propagates from a source. These work like virtual microphones and mimic the common pickup patterns, omni, cardioid, and figure eight. It also includes a sharpness factor, which is the width of the directivity pattern. The occlusion factor simulates an object blocking the direct sound from a source and affects high and low frequencies differently and mimics how occlusion works in reality. The spread determines the point the sound comes from. Sounds like gunshots and ricochets can come from small point sources and have no spread but water sounds will come from wider sources and have high spread. And lastly, I want to cover a few general rules for designing sound in a VR space to help make your world seem more believable. Use mono source files, unless it's an ambisonic sound field, or it's not going to be spatialized. Only use reverb in enclosed spaces. Place audio sources as accurately as possible. Use complex waveforms covering a wide spectrum, Fundamental waveforms like sine waves don't exist naturally and don't spatialize well. If you want a listener to locate a source, play a sound multiple times. Make sure to include higher frequencies as they are easier for our ears to pinpoint and animate it. People have an easier time locating moving sources as opposed to stationary sources. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video series.